Art helps shape and is shaped by the time in which it is made. Artists participate in life like everyone else and are influenced by the economics, philosophy, literature, politics, history, and cultural traditions of their time. Because life is constantly changing, art constantly changes too. These changes in art often happen gradually, organically lurching forward and back, spreading slowly across human experience. Although they may be marked by certain keystone events, they do not emerge in a neat linear fashion of art history books. Nevertheless, historical benchmarks allow us a general understanding of how various ideas and approaches to art have unfolded. The art world is made up of many concerns. There are people who make, buy, promote, study and write about art. There are ideas and theories that try to define art or artistic practices. To gain some understanding of this art world, we need to investigate how art developed, the idea behind it, and where they came from and how we got to where we are now. While in no way superior to art from other cultures, Western art provides an interesting example of how this interaction of theory, practice, ideas, and events evolved. There are two main questions we will be addressing in this video. One is to try and outline differences between three historical periods. The other involves characterizing differences between modern and postmodern art. Let's lay out a very brief timeline just to provide some context for how certain ideas from certain periods emerged in the West. It's important to remember we're leaving out details, and this will make events appear far more linear and simple than they really were. Even though fascinating in its own right, we'll skip prehistory and everything else up to the classical period which begins in Greece around the 8th century BCE. Over time, the Greeks developed democracy, art, science, and a philosophy that explained the world in terms of reason instead of myth and superstition. This emphasis on intellectual agency is known as humanism. In the 6th century BCE, the Roman Republic was founded and carried forward the ideals of the Greeks. Eventually, the Republic became the Roman Empire, which controlled much of the Mediterranean region. The empire provided stability, built roads and aqueducts, and generally made life sweet if you were a Roman citizen. Roman influence in Western Europe lasted for about a thousand years, but eventually collapsed due to political corruption, overreach, and pressures from the migration of non-Roman peoples. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Europe enters into a period known as the Middle or Dark Ages. A decline in population due to disease and invasion, lack of political stability, and the development of a feudal system lead to a loss of knowledge and a return to myth and superstition as a way to make sense of the world. Eventually matters stabilized. Exploration of new lands and the reopening of old trade routes led to a rekindled exchange of ideas between cultures and gave rise to a wealthy merchant class. A fortuitous period of good weather allowed agriculture to flourish. A renewed interest in the humanism of the Greeks and the new technology of the printing press promoted education. This period is known as the Renaissance, which means rebirth. Despite facing resistance from the powerful Catholic Church, science and its method emerged as a primary way to understand the world. In the mid-17th century, the idea that we could know the world through reason alone gives rise to new political, economic, and cultural revolutions. Populations of urban centers increase, and developing technologies shift economic focus to industry. It was becoming a modern world. With all these changes taking place, it was clear that the old ways were no longer working. By the mid-19th century, intellectual idealism would be challenged on two fronts. In the Western world, these political and industrial transformations were viewed by many as the inevitable march of progress. The way of looking at and acting in this new world would become known as modernism. But the growing pains caused by these changes gave rise to both physical and philosophical conflicts. The notion of progress was called into question, especially by peoples who had been displaced or disenfranchised by these changes. For some thinkers, it became clear that the notion of reality itself depended on perspective. This way of thinking challenged the modern worldview. It would become known as postmodernism. Using a very broad brush, let's identify some aspects of the pre-modern, modern, and postmodern periods. In the pre-modern era, the primary economic driver was agriculture, so most people lived in rural areas. During the transition to the modern era, in part driven by the Industrial Revolution's mass production of consumer goods, populations began shifting towards cities where factories were located. In a postmodern era, ready access to and the control of information through the internet means that work can be done anywhere, and people and industries are seen more as global citizens. 
Nation states ebb and flow in the pre-modern era, mostly ruled by military and family alliances. The political revolutions of the modern period displace many of the world dynasties, with republican or socialist states governed by the people. With the globalization of economies in the postmodern era, sovereign borders begin to break down. This means that governments must meet the needs of the changing demographics of their populations. What science there was in the pre-modern period was colored by limited technology and religious doctrine. As the Age of Enlightenment unfolds, the scientific method began to displace faith-based explanations of how the universe worked with observation. Supported by mathematics, it seemed like these laws were fixed and universal. But when Einstein showed that the universe did not always act according to observation, and quantum mechanics revealed new information about the subatomic world, it threw much established knowledge into question. This new view opened up the possibility that all systems were interconnected rather than discrete events taking place. The pre-modern self was defined by ethnic, cultural, and class associations and your clan or tribe. In the modern age, the individual became more important and the personality became a subject worthy of study. Like anything in nature, the self was made up of layers that could not be seen. With the emphasis on systems in postmodern thinking, the individual became a product of the environment, experience subjective, and therefore reality simply a matter of social construct. So what about art, which is why we're here? In the pre-modern era, art's value derived from how well it supported societal beliefs or mirrored nature. As the individual moved to the forefront of the modern era, individual expression and originality became the goal of art. Postmodern art, influenced by the system thinking of the social sciences, questions the notion of linear progress and originality, and artistic process starts to overtake final product in importance. Let's break that down a bit more. To summarize very generally, a pre-modern artwork showed some aspect of observable or faith-based experience. It might be, and probably was, symbolic or metaphorical. A modern artwork is not a representation of nature, but an expression of the artist's subjective experience of it. In its most reductive state, a painting was just paint on a canvas, not symbolic of anything, but an arena for which the artist to act. But as Europe burned during World War I, some artists began to question the utility of art in society. They contested what was considered valuable or skillful in art. When Marcel Duchamp submitted his ready-made, Fountain, to the Society of Independent Artists in 1917, he challenged the very nature of art. If Duchamp, a well-known artist, said that this was art, why couldn't it be? This opened the question, if art was not in the object, where was it? For Duchamp, the aesthetic experience was in the idea behind the art. This view changed the significant aspect of art from being primarily visual to being primarily conceptual. This shift would allow for many new art forms to evolve, but it also meant the coding works of art would be more difficult. So this leads us to our second question. What are the differences between modern and postmodern art? Again, keep in mind, we're using a very broad brush. In modern art, abstraction became a way to express subjective experience. The arrangement of the formal elements must somehow allow for this expression to communicate with the viewer. Many theories arose about how this communication should and would take place. Postmodern artists saw this abstract theory as isolating art from the culture at large. They wanted their art to address real life more directly. The emphasis on originality in modern art meant that individuals who created unique and original art must somehow have special insight into the human condition. In postmodern art, since nothing was truly original, all ideas were interrelated and art was a reworking of concepts to arrive at new contextual relationships. Modern artists were exploring the possibility for expressing universal values and progressive ideas. Postmodern artists feel that all art is colored by the context of the artist and therefore can only reflect a limited point of view of the world and that universal truth is an illusion. So if modern art was about universal values, then the meaning of art must be absolute. If you were sensitive enough to get it, you would be rewarded with new insight. In postmodern art, since there is no universal truth, the artwork is open to many interpretations. A modern society values artwork that reinforces the notion that they are progressive and prosperous due to their enlightened value systems. Postmodern art accepts and promotes cultural conflict recognizing that the notion of what is good or bad art reflects on the bias of the group in control 
which in turn helps oppress those groups that are not. Postmodern art generally looks to be more inclusive and democratic. These differences between modern and postmodern thinking gave rise to new art forms in the 20th century. A characteristic of this new art was the use of common materials and emerging technologies. These art forms were often temporary, spontaneous, and questioned whether the audience or the artist was in control of the work. The artist's own body was often the raw material. Parameters of human endurance, psychological states, and physical space were explored. Artists investigated how language and media shaped our sense of reality. The line between artist and activist sometimes blurred. Process became paramount. Our expectations about images, ownership, and originality were challenged by artists who purposely recycled the work of other artists. The German term Zeitgeist, or the spirit of the times, is used to explain the philosophical, political, and theoretical ideas typical of an era. How does this Zeitgeist develop? It's not as though there are meetings or elections to decide these things. Rather, ideas come into being through writings, works of art, music and film, and now social media, which gradually make their way into the wider consciousness. These ideas in turn inspire new thinkers. They are discussed, challenged, and reworked. Some ideas may evolve into belief systems and take many decades or centuries to play themselves out. Other times, ideas are just flash in the pan and disappear quickly. The process is never planned, always sloppy, and fraught with both danger and possibility. But when we think back to our timeline, clearly the amount of time an era lasts shrinks exponentially with the development of communication technologies, whether it be the printing press or the internet. Postmodernism has contributed to a certain anxiety in society. We say the only constant is change, yet we accept it reluctantly. The loss of clear boundaries, whether geographic, cultural, or philosophical, means the grounds beneath our feet is unsteady. Some critics of postmodern thought feel the emphasis on relativism makes judgment problematic, creating a vagueness that makes reasoned argument next to impossible. We can see this play out as we try to wrap our heads around some contemporary art that challenges the very nature of art. Certainly there is continued debate about these postmodern views and how accurately they describe our world. Some artists and critics feel that the postmodern art we have looked at represents a lack of artistic skill at best and a cultural nihilism at worst. We may not agree with these ideas or feel that these art forms are interesting or valid, but some knowledge of these postmodern ideas is necessary to understand the current state of contemporary art.